Hey everyone out there in the world of Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you're viewing this video today. I want to thank you for clicking that play button and watching this video, whether you watch part of it or all the way through. I hope you'll stay and watch all the way through and share with friends and family as hopefully this video will bring awareness of a situation that is growing on our highways and streets. Now, if shared enough and enough awareness is brought to it, maybe we can save some lives as well. But Anyways, my name is Nick, and this video is way different than any I've ever had to do, you know, as far as my videos that I post. This video is way more important, and most videos take me roughly a week to put together, while this one is taking me forever, and, you know, it, it really sucks because it's very important, but at the same time, I've wanted to get this done right. Now, right here, right now, I'm speaking just off my mind and trying to do this. Uh, I've had pages typed up on exactly what I want to say to you guys and how to say it. But the problem is with reading it and recording, it's created an issue to where it takes quite a bit to go through. And every time I'm looking down, the recording just doesn't look right, which is why it's taken so long and a lot of it I'm messing up with. So I'm kind of doing this more off the cuff. But I will read through this, what I've typed here and there to make sure I get my information that I have in here correct. Anyways, thank you for hitting the play button. And before I go into the video, I want to bring up something that's important as well. In life with there being seven and a half billion people on this planet roughly, give or take, I don't know the exact number, I just know it's up there. We as humans interact with people every single day. There's not a day you go unless you're staying in your house locked up that you will not meet other people. And now every day you meet people, tons of people. Some of them become friends, some of them, you know, enemies, some of them just acquaintances, and majority of those people you meet on a daily basis, you'll never, ever, ever see again in your life because there's just that many people and, you know, cities are huge and everything. So, with that said, there are certain cases where everything just seems to be lined up, whether you're religious, whether you're not, um, or you believe in destiny or Yo, it's hard to explain, but there are certain situations where you meet someone and it seems that everything was meant to lead up to that point. You know, certain things that shouldn't have happened that happened that put you in that place at that time when you meet. And that's what this video is about as well, is about someone who came into my life, my girlfriend Brittany's life, and from it, his family's come into his life, or our life, and we shouldn't have even been there. We shouldn't have been in this situation at that time. But it just so happened that it lined up that way. And we're very thankful and lucky that it did this way. So anyways, before I get into the morning of... Let's see what I got written here. Because I got this typed down. The morning of Monday, June 27th, when we met, um, I want to go into the background of the person we met. And so you know who he is, and then we'll go into how we met. His name is Brandon Blocker. And got to pull up this paper so I can get my information right. Now, Brandon Blocker may be the name he goes by. That may be his title, but he's got many more titles than that. He's a husband to his wife, Nicole Blocker. He's a father to his daughter, Skyler, who's age three. His two sons, Brayden and Caden, age 12 and almost two for Caden. He's a son to his mother, Danelle, and his father, Steve. A cousin, an uncle, and so much more. Brandon is a family man who, when he's not working, he's doing everything he can do for his family. From vacations to coaching or being out at the track or out at the track for BMX with his son Brayden and the team. 
Brayton tries to be the best he can be, but he can also be stubborn, and I mean this in a good way. When Brandon gets it in his mind that he wants to do something, he's going to do it, and at this point, it's almost impossible to stop him. He's also compassionate about those around him, even if he doesn't know him. And this just brings me to just a couple weeks before we met, because we met on at the end of June. Now, June 11th, around 1 a.m., Brandon was uh, heading south on Interstate 5. He was on his way to Chilla Vista when he witnessed a lady fall asleep behind the wheel. She drifted off the shoulder into an embankment and, uh, and caused her vehicle to roll off of the shoulder. Brandon's instincts kicked in, and he didn't think twice as he ran to the vehicle. The vehicle was laying on its side, and he used his elbow to break the window, and he managed to get the driver out of the vehicle safely. While most people just passed by, Brandon did what most of us wouldn't. He, and this is what I mean by reading, I get a little distracted. Uh, most of us may call 911 and keep driving while a bunch of us won't. And that's one issue we have. So, Brandon did what he felt was the right thing. He stepped up, he stopped, and he potentially saved a life of someone else on the roadway in their time of screwing up and driving a little tired. And anyways, now this, we're gonna fast forward this to just a couple or weeks later to the morning of June 27th, Monday. Um, it was probably about 1.30 in the morning. We're getting up here from our Vegas apartment. We're getting ready to head out to Six Flags. Six Flags had emailed us and uh, offered us to bring friends with our season pass or our memberships for only 10 bucks a piece per person. And if it wasn't for that email, we would have stayed home. We weren't planning on going to Six Flags, but that email offering to bring a friend for $9.99 a piece for each of us was enough said, hey, let's go. And the only date that fit was that morning of Monday, June 27th. So that's the first of things that lined up to put us in this situation. Um, we're getting ready to go. We're getting in the car and we're heading south on the 15 out of Vegas. And Brandon, at this point, he's uh, in Needles, California, right on the California-Arizona border. He's finishing a vacation weekend with his family uh, just on the river. And while his family is sleeping, he's getting ready to start heading back home and get things taken care of. Now, we left. We're rolling. We made a few stops. Uh, we stopped at Gold Coast or Gold Strike or whatever that is out at Nevada State Line uh, to look at some movie cars and headed on our way. Now, Brandon and us are on a collision course towards each other at this point in time in the morning and it was just lining up to where we were in the right place at the right time when we met. Um, he came up next to us um, roughly trying to figure this out here I had times anyways forget the papers because I'm not going to read through that and try to figure out where I'm at so Brandon came up alongside of us and at this point we didn't know that we were going to meet or anything like that he was in the number one travel lane and he was moving just a little bit faster than us, not too much, but a little bit. And as he came up next to us and he passed us, we noticed something a little off. He started drifting from that number one lane to the number two and back into the number one. And it was just slight drifts, nothing too much, nothing to raise too much concern, possibly just a distracted driver, which is another issue we have on our roadways, put the cell phones down. But in this case, Brandon was not. Brandon, who was advised by his wife to stay a little bit longer, get a little bit more sleep and needles before heading back home, and in that situation, he was being stubborn. He continued on anyways, and 
now he's next to us he's drifting and this was uh, I-15 South about 10 miles um, north of Stoddard Wells Road when he came up next to us uh, just before Victorville and everything like that so he came up next to us he's drifting from side to side and eventually you know it caught a little bit concerned because his drifting was getting a little out of hand so I immediately had Brittany contact 911 and I got on the phone with the dispatcher told him got a driver Chevy Tahoe uh, I-15 South and that he's drifting around he's struggling to maintain his lane so I get off the phone with dispatch and as we're going down the road it's getting a little worse so Brittany decides she's gonna unplug our cell phones that are plugged in charging and instead pop in our dash cam we have one of these in every vehicle I own that's two vehicles two cameras and any more I drive I will always buy a dash cam and I recommend getting them so anyway she plugs it in it takes about five seconds for it to boot up and at this point right when it turned on started recording is right where we're at now so I'm gonna leave you here and let you see the way we met through the dash cam video and I will be back afterwards Okay, so now that you know how we met and what happened, Brandon fell asleep. Brandon drifted across the three lanes of traffic, hit the shoulder, it woke him up, I believe, and when he turned the wheel, he might have turned it too hard. In fact, I don't even know if he woke up at that point to catch that. But when he hit the shoulder, my best guess is that he was asleep Obviously, he was asleep, but when he hit the shoulder, since his hands were not gripping the wheel, the tires turned sharply, caused the truck to roll over. It rolled about seven, eight, maybe nine times across the freeway, and it shut down four lanes of traffic. Uh, luckily, my vehicle has emergency lights, um, just emergency hazards, all factory lights that flash, which I use to slow down traffic at this point in time, as you'd seen. Stop the vehicle and immediately run to his side to make sure he's okay. And this is where I get to the point of everyone's got a lot on their mind. Everyone's, where they're going seems to be more important than, you know, what's going on around them. People are distracted, they're rushing to work, and Brandon had just flipped seven, eight, nine times. Now, as you see in the video, there was a vehicle in front of me when he started flipping. I moved to the lane next to him, got in front of traffic, stopped traffic, and ran out straight after him. The vehicle that was in front of me maybe called 911 and took off. And no one, I understand if there's people stopped to help and it's under control, but when you witness an accident and you keep on driving, I couldn't live with myself doing that.
honestly, I could not, couldn't do it. I stop, I make sure everything's okay, and sadly, I was the only one who witnessed the accident that stayed. Now, also, there was a semi-truck that pulled up to the right, which you'd seen, got out, walked around the vehicle, came up to me, he checked to see if everything was okay, got back in his truck and left, and went back to delivering his load wherever he's going in California. I understand the industry puts a lot of stress on truck drivers as far as getting deliveries done on time. But he stopped, checked, and then got back in his truck and left. And as you saw, another semi-truck pulled up, stopped, and stayed the whole time, and one other person stopped. Now, out of the four vehicles stopped, two of us witnessed, that was me and the first semi-truck, and then another semi-truck pulled up, and an off-duty security officer. These are all people who, well, the truck drivers, obviously people who share the road with you each and every day, who care more about you and you getting home safe as they do getting home safe. But I'm also a truck driver. I may have been in my personal vehicle, but that says three out of four vehicles are truck drivers and one was an off-duty security officer, which brings, you know, an issue there. The only people that think about this are those who see this on a regular basis and care about you as well. So no one stopped except three truck drivers and an off-duty security officer and that says a lot to me because if I was in the same situation, I know I would want someone there to save my rear end in that screw up. But as a truck driver, I know it's very important to stop when you're tired. Don't keep pushing. If you're tired, please pull over. Get out of the vehicle, walk around. Do what you need to do to wake up. You may drink those energy drinks, think you're fine, but as a truck driver, I know that's not the case. I can drink a two liter of soda straight and pass out moments later. That's not gonna help me. So, with that said, this video here is mainly to bring awareness about driving tired. Please don't do it. I beg you not to. Because not only are you chancing your life, you are chancing everyone's around you. And now back to Brandon. I've shown you the footage. I've shown you who Brandon is. And I've shown you over this video photos from the accident he is lucky to be alive that day could have turned out to be something where we never contacted each other again Brandon I could have no contact not know who he is not know his name the only reason I know Brandon's name and have come in contact with him again after which I forgot to bring up earlier is the fact that I'm part of a group on Facebook called Victor Valley News Group. Victor Valley News Group is a page for people in Victor Valley to know what's going on. I accidentally got added by my cousin two years ago to that Facebook page. But since I drive through frequently, I keep myself on that page and I've kept myself on there. So thank you Vanessa for adding me to the Facebook page accidentally because not only did we accidentally end up in the right place at the right time I saw a post on Victor Valley News Group about the accident and I had commented I commented saying I was the first on, on the scene of the accident he wasn't looking the greatest but paramedics arrived they took him off and he's looking like he should be okay from there the RN at the hospital that was working on Brandon at that time saw my comment and he had already gone through Facebook to find and reach out to Brandon's family and he got a hold of a friend of Brandon's who got a hold of Nicole his wife I believe that's exactly how that happened and how that worked out but he got a hold of me and that's when he had or I gave him my number and he gave it to Nicole who called me while we were at Six Flags. And she asked me 
what happened and to give her the background on it. Now, um, it does hit me hard thinking back on it and thinking back on talking to Nicole after and telling her exactly what happened to her husband. But since we've kept in contact and they've seen the video, CHP's seen the video, everyone's seen the video on that end that you've just seen. And from that, you know, we've, I've made friendship, Brittany's made friendship with family of Brandon's and Brandon and Nicole and their kids are always gonna be friends to us. So it was a lot of situations that put up to just put us in the right place at the right time to not only meet, but to meet again after. Uh, we're planning a trip down to Cali to go meet Brandon in person without him bleeding, without him unconscious, and hopefully soon we will. But anyways, before I wrap this up and play some other videos from the family of Brandon Blocker, I want to say this. If this video has hit you here, hit you here, please click the share button. We need to bring awareness of what happens when you fall asleep when you're tired. It happened to my brother. My brother wrecked on his way to school a year and a half ago. And it was a scary day for me when I found out. If you fall asleep behind the wheel, not only are you jeopardizing yourself, but anyone in your vehicle and everyone on the roadway around you. Brandon is lucky he didn't hit anyone else on the road. Very lucky. He could, and not only that, he's lucky he's alive. And the doctors and everyone are amazed that he's alive. So, please share this video. And also, if you can, I know a lot of us are struggling. I'm struggling everything. If you have a dollar, you have a quarter, you have 50 cents, anything that you can donate, whether a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, a quarter, a penny, not that low, please. <laughs> but if you get the point I'm trying to say, head over to GoFundMe.com forward slash Brandon Blocker. That's GoFundMe.com slash B-R-A-N-D-O-N for Brandon and Blocker, B-L-O-C-K-E-R. Again, that's B-R-A-N-D-O-N, B-L-O-C-K-E-R. That's GoFundMe.com forward slash Brandon Blocker. They're trying to raise money for his medical bills. They don't like the whole GoFundMe idea, you know, but in situations like this, he's got out-of-pocket medical expenses and so much more, and their family is struggling. On top of it, a week before the accident, uh, I found out Nicole was laid off of work. She's struggling to find work. Now Brandon's out of work. So they're both out of work, they got three kids, and they've had the worst luck in this situation, but the best luck. They've had the best luck in the fact that he's alive, he's doing well, he's recovering slowly, but the medical bills are rolling in. And so much more financially from this is happening that honestly, it's, kind of the worst situation that could happen for them but it could have been worse so please if you could go ahead to the GoFundMe uh, share this video with friends and family and I'm gonna let you know Brandon's family speak from here out I'm out have a good day and please don't drive tired that's the main part of this video that we want to get out and thank you again for watching this video all the way through have a good day Stay strong. Well, this has been a very emotional last couple of days. Um, today is Wednesday, June 29th, and on Monday morning, the 27th, I received a phone call that we believed my husband, Brandon, was potentially in a hospital in Colton, California. I was getting ready to leave Brandon's grandparents' house at the river in Mojave Valley, Arizona with our three kids 
and I received this phone call from Brandon's mom letting me know that an RN from the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center had contacted a gentleman from uh, GHP, his name is Greg Hill, and he had found him on Brandon's Facebook page and Greg got in contact with Brandon's dad who called his mom who got in contact with me and to get the call that we think your husband's been in a car accident and trying to have you um, identify him from his tattoos and scars over the phone was not um, not what I had in store for myself that morning. Um, our kids and I set out for a nice long three and a half hour car ride to Colton, California to go and see if in fact this was Brandon at the hospital, which we were 99% sure it was at that point. And when we got there, um, words could not have um, nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to see when I walked into trauma. And, you know, I to see his car yesterday um, and know what a miracle he is and just how much he was being protected by God and the fact is that he's still here. Um, what was a Tahoe with a six inch lift looked much more like a sedan station wagon type vehicle. Um, words just escape me. Um, Brandon is truly a miracle and I'm so thankful that he is here for me and our kids and um, I just I know this is going to be a very challenging road but I will take this compared to what the alternative could have been and like I said you know today's Wednesday this accident just happened two days ago and um, we were moved out of trauma yesterday morning yesterday midday um, and we're now in the stroke unit, which is a step down from the ICU, so that in itself is tremendous. So, um, through the power of prayer, and um, yeah, we're going to get through this. I know he's going to pull through it, and i um, just trying to stay strong. My daddy's feeling better. I, he's the best ever yet. He's the best daddy I've ever seen, and I love him. And he's the best daddy I've ever seen. Daddy, I love you, and so happy that you made it out of the crash, and glad that God helped you. Cause I don't know what I'd do without you, cause I'd be so lost. I'm just glad God helped save you. I love you so much. Uh, I know. Hi, Dad. Say, I love you. I love you. Good job. I love you, Dad. The unthinkable. Well, we made it through everything we could possibly Brandon. Do. I know we have a lot more child tribulations to go, but I'm ready to join in with you. I don't know what else to say. I am so incredibly thankful that you have made it through this and that you are where you are today. I don't know where I would be with our kids without you and I don't know. I love you so much. I am so so thankful for you, for your love, for your support, for everything you do for our family, for our kids. 
seeing you in that hospital bed was the hardest thing. And I am just so thankful to God that he has brought you through as he has. And although this is going to be a long road ahead of us, I know that he's going to heal you. I know that he's going to heal you. We have a whole rest of our lives to live. I love you so much. And I'm here by your side for all of this. And just remember that. And also remember to listen to me if I say don't do something because your wife was right. You didn't need to go. You didn't need to leave. But I'm glad that you're able to be home. I love you. Hi, Brandon. Well, you definitely win the worst accident in the family award. Sorry. But you do. But anyways, we've been through a lot this week. We've been worried about you. We've prayed so much for you. And we have seen God do amazing things. And we're just so grateful for all that he's done and all the ways that he's healed you beyond what we expected. Um, I just hope that you can use this time to draw close to him as you heal. And that there's a verse that I keep thinking about. It's... Um, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I just hope that you can lean on that and um, heal and use this time to bring him glory and that he would just use you to minister to others that go through these same types of hard times. We love you so much. You mean so much to our family. My sons adore you and John Luke can't wait for you to teach him how to be a catcher. So get better. We're here for you. We're praying for you. Love you. Well, it's been nearly two weeks since Brandon's car accident, and it has been a tough one. But the progress that Brandon has made has been tremendous, and I am just so incredibly thankful that God has brought him through to where he is today. Although the rest of the road is going to be challenging at times, it is way better than what could have happened and we still have Brandon here with us and he is alive and um, you know it, his broken bones are healing uh, his contusions are healing um, he is still having some challenges with his short-term memory unfortunately um, a lot of repetitive conversations a lot of asking the same questions and it's getting him kind of frustrated at times. Um, Brandon has now seen the pictures of him in the hospital, the pictures of his vehicle that his dad and I saw at the tow yard, and he's also seen the video of the crash, and it was very, very hard for Brandon to watch, and it was very, very hard for me to watch him seeing all of these things, but it was very important for Brandon to see everything and realize and understand the magnitude of what he had been through. Um, you know, it's it's so easy to say that I'm tired, but I'll I'll get through and I'll get there and it'll be okay and then I'll rest. But the reality of it is, you never know what's going to happen. Brandon leaving around 2.30 in the morning and driving nearly three hours before his car accident. He didn't listen when I asked him to please wait because he was tired and just to drive a couple hours later. And he definitely regrets that decision now. Um, you know, it's very hard for us to go through this, but you know, that one decision to drive tired could have impacted many more families than just ours. You know, he's very lucky that he's made it out of this, and we're very blessed that he has made it out of this. But at the same time, the fact that no other vehicles were involved is just incredible. Um, the fact that Nick and Brittany stopped to help Brandon, we've made new lifelong friends and I could never repay them for just doing what so many people don't do when they see a car accident. 
and the fact that Brandon did the same for somebody else a couple of weeks prior to his accident is just is just absolutely remarkable. This entire thing has been unfortunately in the works for quite some time, but I'm confident that you know we're at a better place now together um, and that a lot of good will come out of this. Um, you know, it's, it's just very, it's very exhausting and it's very humbling at the same time, just to know that God has brought you through something that, you know, within the hours surrounding the days surrounding Brandon's car accident, there were five accidents on the same stretch of highway and his appears to have been the worst accident and yet he was the only non-fatality so God has a plan for Brandon and you know it's he's gonna do with it what he's supposed to do and what he is meant to be here for so I just ask that if you are tired please please do not get behind the wheel you think an energy drink or a coffee or Something's going to keep you awake, but you just never know, and it's not worth it. It's not worth it for you. It's not worth it for your family or your friends. It's not worth it for the other people that are going to be driving around you, the other cars. Nobody knows what can happen, and it's just better to be safe than sorry.